All right, so at the end of the last video, I was going to do a highlight in the window. Now I'm getting a little too detail oriented. So I need to, to look at the big picture, but I wanted to show you kind of highlights like I did in the curtains and how they're fun. So I'm going to take that swoosh. I'm going to Command T, transform it, shrink it down, make it into these kind of slashes, right? And that gives a little highlight to the window. And then I can duplicate that move it down there we go if i'm really really picky and this happens with vectors all the time i'll see that one little corner doesn't quite match up and so if i'm really picky i can work on that just by transforming it just ever so slightly so it does line up but I, we do not need these to be perfect. This is an exercise. But now I have a nice little window. And I'm thinking, that kind of looks right. But I think I need a little uh, more architectural element. So I'm going to take this one and duplicate it. Bring it down. Command-T, hold down Shift and Option to distort it. And I'm going to give like a little shelf underneath it. And then I'm going to change its color to a darker brown. Maybe about there. And then I want to move it underneath the other one. So I'm going to do Command Left Bracket. And then I'm going to do Command J, duplicate this one again, and make it a lighter brown. This is how I can make kind of a dimensional shelf. Hit Command T, hold down Shift. And bring it down in the middle, right? And now I just need to warp it so it feels connected at the ends. So Command T, right click Warp. And now I'm just messing with these edges so that they line up with each other, which is what a lot of vector design is, especially when you do color. So trying to get these curves to feel sympathetic to each other. And I can work them from both angles. I can work the one behind and the one on top. So it feels like a piece of wood, right, that has an edge. And then, lucky me, I get to do it to the other side, too. But here's a, a nice trick for symmetry. Instead, I can just do this to make my life a little bit easier. I can just bring this in, make it too short, because I know it's working on the other side. Bring this one in, make it too short with warp, so it isolates out. Right? Then... Haha, uh -huh. just like I did with the curtains, I'm going to select both of these, hold down shift, select both of them, put them into a folder, a group, duplicate the group, and then command T, flip it horizontally, and move it. And I was hoping that would work perfectly, but no, I have to do it to the center. So no, that sucks. <laughs> but it ma matches here to here. But no, I got to, it was a good try. And it would work for symmetrical design if I did it in the middle. But I didn't push it far enough. So instead, I'm going to go back before I transform those edges. And then I'm going to work on them just like I did the one before. And it's okay if they don't match exactly. So the computer can really help with symmetry. But sometimes it's a big pain as well. We'll let it go at that. All right. I can use distort to kind of taper this shadow. So maybe it looks a little bit more believable. Coming underneath that window sill. And then 
I can even just play with opacity instead of changing the color to make it look like a shadow. That can be fun. Just like with that window blue, I can just play with opacity to kind of mix it with the yellow behind so it looks more believable. Okay, now I think I want another layer on the roof. So I'm going to duplicate my big triangle here and then Command T. And then I'm going to hold down Option as I grow it out from the middle. Make it bigger and then I'm going to change its color. And I'll get to pick my own color here. I want something kind of brownish sienna like. It's a little bit warmer, be about there. And then I'm going to push that behind the blue. And then I see that the blue doesn't feel quite right. But maybe first I'm going to take this triangle and warp it. Soften this out a little bit on both sides. for my emoji. And now, let's see, what would be better than blue? I can try out lots of different things. I could try out a pink, that kind of faded grayish blue, green, So when you're trying to kind of minimize down to flat shapes, the colors really make a difference. They really matter. All right, is there anything else I want? Maybe just a little highlight in the eye to show childlike wonder. I'm just going to change that to a white floating on top. Make sure it's moved above the pupil. Then I'll duplicate it and then move it over. The other side and then maybe I want one more layer yeah no I'll leave it at that for now okay so to save this work now we're at 1130 it's a good time if you're ready to save your flat graphic and I want everyone to do this this is the basic requirements this is like the black exercise one the black shape I want a flat graphic example with just shapes that are filled in with a single pixel color there's no variation to them it's like they're cut out i don't need these shapes but i don't need to delete them i can just turn their eyeballs off and the requirements are you turn off every layer that doesn't have a shape icon in it so that you're only showing vector shapes or groups with vector shapes so you can see i have probably about 50 layers but they're all vector shape layers. And all of these others are turned off. Even my background white. Then I'm going to hit Command S just to save it as my Photoshop file. It updates it right there. And then I'm going to hit File, Save a Copy. If I'm in Photoshop, if I'm in Photo P, I'm going to say Export As. And I'm going to change it to my computer. So if it's to Cloud Documents, change that so it's to your computer. And you're going to save it as a PNG to my desktop. So this will now be a free floating emoji icon that's just made of flat shapes. I can load that into Canvas. And that's the basics of the assignment. It's this, right? So how do I post it? So what I do is I write my name and then in parentheses or in some other way, you can use dashes. I'm going to give the name of the band book that I am making an emoji for light in the attic. And if I want to check that name, I can go up to the list. A, a light in the attic. I don't need you to give the author just the title of the book, but do get the title correct. A light in the attic. And then my emoji, I'm going to drag and drop 
from the PNG file, not the PSD file, on my desktop. Remember, PNG is an online file type. I can use Command minus to kind of shrink things on my screen, and then I want to size it so it fits nicely with my name and title. And then post, like so. Now I have a few more minutes. So if I want to push this a little bit further with options, just like we added color for our first exercise, the option here is to take it from just flat graphic shapes to what's called flat 2.0. Flat 2.0 just uses tones of the original shapes. And you can think of them as shadows. Sometimes it uses gradations. And those are extremely easy to add. So I'm going to show you how to do that, just like I did it with this example, changing it to this. We use what are called layer styles. So the layer effect options, and we do that by double clicking on the layer. So now that I've posted my, my requirements, now I can do a, an optional change to it. And what a layer style is, I'll do it, uh, let's see, on this background window shape first. So that shape, I'm going to double click it on the layer, not on the title of the layer, not on the preview icon of the layer, but on the gray of the layer, and it opens up layer styles. Layer styles are wonderful to use with vectors because layer styles affect any pixel in the layer, and a vector gives you perfectly clean pixels at any scale. So if I wanted to add a stroke, this is where I would add it, an outline around something instead of coding it into the vector, because you get more options with these strokes. I'm going to try what's called an inner shadow. You see that little shadow at the top? And then if I click on it, I can play with the size of it and the opacity of it and the color of it, though I kind of like that color. I'm going to make it really subtle. So there's a little shadow on the windowsill or the base of the window. Make sure I have the base. No, I don't want that. I want this. This one. I'm going to move that up over the top of everything else. It's my canoe one because <laughs> it's a custom shape. And I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to try an inner shadow. Nope, don't like that. So instead, this time I'm going to try a drop shadow. I want a shadow underneath it. And I can play with the settings on drop shadow. spread of it, the distance away, the angle. I'm just going to do a straight 90 degree angle, straight up and down. And I can play with the sharpness of it. And I want it to kind of match this one. So if I play with opacity, I can get it to just have a little bit of a shadow underneath. Right. So this is starting to turn it into that flat 2.0. Now, if I want to play with gradations, this gets a little bit trickier. Let's see, I'll do it on the blue shape here. We'll be getting into all these later styles eventually, but I can do something called a gradient overlay. And these gradient overlays can get really complicated, but I'm just going to use the basics and I'm just going to do uh, light to dark, right? Whoops. And if I ever need to get back to them, this is what's great about these layer style effects. You can always turn them on and off. And you can just click, double click on them and get right to your settings. And then you can adjust them. So I'm going to change the angle to 90 degrees. And I'm just going to have a gradate all the way through. And I'm going to set it on, let's say, overlay. Uh, maybe multiply. Yeah, that's better. And then play with the opacity. So I feel like there's a little bit of that shadow on that roof. I can even play with blending modes within just the layer style. If I wanted kind of a more granular effect, I could use dissolve. What if I use my big circle, right? I'll have to be careful about this. But if I use inner shadow, for instance, let's turn the effects on, I can get kind of this shadow on the bottom. The problem is because I have that triangle overlapping it, it looks a little weird. So instead of